you're not going to see them unless they want you to see them. They just kind of melt into this landscape like nothing else. My name is Richard Pickens. I'm a field tech here at the Field Day Conservation Fund. Field Day is an organization that's dedicated to protecting wild cats and their habitat across the world. And this particular project is the Bay Area Puma Project. Um, is focused more on mountain lions and their habitat and conservation here in the Bay Area. Right now we're in the hills east of San Jose. We're going out there trying to capture mountain lions and put uh, GPS collars on them to get a sense of where they are, how many there are, what they're doing, what they're eating, and what habitat they're using. So just kind of getting those baseline stats on the population here in the East Bay. It's a really great area to study for the wildland interface. There's never really been a, a project here uh, done before to see how people and their encroachment into these uh, wild places are affecting the large cats out here. We have about 23 cameras in this area alone. Each site has a remote camera that is triggered through movement. Anytime an animal or anything else passes by, it triggers a photograph and we get an instant record of the date and time. Right now it's in a setup mode. And so it's telling me whenever it's sensing something. So when I'm wandering around like out here, I'm just trying to get it to put up that red light which says that the sensor is working. Drainages, roads, and uh, ridge tops tend to be their most frequented areas. And what makes a site even better is if it's a, a crossroads or there's uh, some reason for a cat to go there like water or if it's a good connecting spot from one drainage to the other. We take bait, in this case, roadkill deer, and set a camera up on the roadkill deer. And when a cat comes and feeds on the deer, we get an instant uh, record of that, and we can go in and put on a, a trap out to try and capture the animal. So right now we have two cats collared. We have several more collars to put out in the coming year. The project's just now kind of coming into its own. Basically, it shows it putting its front paws up on the branch here. We had the predator call attached up here, and so basically it was trying to check out what was making the noise, and then it just hauled it, the rest of its body, its hind legs, up onto this branch. The biggest threat for mountain lions is habitat isolation. If you can conserve mountain lion habitat, you can then conserve a large number of species that fall into that large area. Yeah. She was here for a while and then she has moved up to other clusters. They only stay in a spot for, uh, for a while if they're, usually if they're getting kittens or if they've killed something. We can uh, figure out when they've actually had a kill and we can go up and see exactly what they're eating. 200 feet. And as we get farther and farther, I keep saying it's more and more down there. We've already extirpated um, all sorts of other predators. You know, there used to be wolves here, there used to be bears here, there used to be grizzly bears here, and they're really only our only top predator left. Uh, there are prints over here. Yeah. So there's a cache site over there where Ian is, and then there are actual leg bones and stuff over here. Big old tooth hole. If you could get a, you can see where they nod there too. On a very fine scale, we can see what habitat the cats are actually utilizing. And if you know what cats need to survive, then you know what you need to conserve if you want to, in turn, have these animals around.